Perfect. So today I'm going to be presenting the Leica Total Stations um, that Leica offers. <clears throat> Just to give a little background about, my, about myself. So my name is Stefan Roy. Um, I've been in the mining industry for about uh, just over five years. Uh, that includes, I've been working in the engineering and consulting firms. Um, I was a contractor, at, yeah, I was a contractor for, uh, for a year and I worked underground for a couple of years uh, as an underground surveyor. Um, currently, I've been with uh, NSS for about three and a half years. Um, and my title here is the Mining and Engineering Account Manager. So I deal with all the total stations, uh, GPS systems, uh, high definition scanners for above and below ground and uh, a bunch of different serving solutions that we're able to offer. So what are the Leica uh, geosystem products that uh, we're able to offer? So we have a nice big list here that we're able to, um, to introduce. So today I'm only gonna pre be presenting one of them, which will be total stations. But we do have other uh, presentations uh, that we will be presenting in the future. One of them, it will be the GNSS systems and reference networks, um, as well as the laser scanners. So these are, uh, again, different segments that we're able to offer uh, to our company. So who trusts uh, like the equipment? So we have a nice big list here of uh, one of our best clients. Obviously I can't put them all on here, um, but these are some of them that were, that popped into my head when I was making this uh, list nice and quickly. Um, so these people here, they trust our life equipment uh, from every segment. So that can include total stations, GPS, scanners, um, I, as well as they call us up for different serving solutions. So we've got a nice little list going here. All right, let's get right to it. So like I said, I'll be presenting the uh, like a total station. So just so we can give a little brief, What's a total station? So essentially a total station uh, is a theodolite or an electronical or an electronic optical instrument uh, that's used for serving and uh, building construction. Um, it's, an, it's an electronic transit theodolite integrated with uh, electronic distance measurements, also known as an EDM, uh, to measure both vertical and horizontal angles. It also measures the slope distance for, uh, from the instrument to a particular point um, it also has an onboard computer to collect data and to perform uh, triangulation calculations. So essentially there's three lines of uh, like a total stations. You got the manual total stations, you got the robotic total stations, as well as the multi stations. And we're gonna touch base on all three of those subjects um, in my presentation. First one, so why would someone go ahead and get a, uh, a manual total station? Well, first off, it's easy to use. It's a basic total station serving tool. Um, it's used to turn your horizontal and vertical angles. Um, it, it creates easy shots. It'll record your simple data. Um, and that's pretty much it. So if you want something nice and basic, this is the tool to use. Um, it's a two plus uh, person serving operation. So if you've got a nice little serving crew um, or you have helpers for your surveyor, this is a tool to use as well. Um, and one of the uh, one of the best parts is that it's a low cost of acquisition. You can actually get a cheap manual total station um, and have uh, and acquire it very cheaply to do uh, your survey work. So, just to give you a brief of the components for a manual total station, it's not robotic. It does not turn by itself. Um, so, in, so basically, how to use it? You're going to have to use your vertical uh, adjustment and screws as well as your horizontal adjusted tangent screws. So your vertical one will actually move your scope up and down and your horizontal tangent screw will move your instrument left and right. While you're doing that, you'll be scoping out your prism, your target, or even just a simple point on the ground or on the wall uh, through the scope. And you'll be looking through here for your crosshairs. And I got a nice target there, a picture of the target. Well, you'll be looking for, uh, you'll be putting that crosshair pretty much on the target that you want to pick up. In there, you can either get a distance or you can take a complete measurement. Hey, Steph. Yep. There's, a, there's a box on the top of your screen that I'm seeing. I don't know if everyone's seeing it. But yeah, if you want to close. Yeah, I'm seeing that. There we go. Much better. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Awesome. 
So in Leica, um, we're able to offer three different lines of, uh, of flex line total stations. So when I talk about manual total stations, you'll probably hear me uh, say flex line. So flex line is pretty much the model name of our manual total stations. So you got the TSO3, the TSO7, as well as the TS10. So for the TSO3 and the TSO7, they're pretty much the exact same instrument. Um, they both use a flex field software. You can vary your instrument on the accuracy. So there's pretty much, excuse me, pretty much the model that you're gonna get. The one app that the flex line has, or sorry, the TSO7 has, is that it's able to pick up a shot uh, at a thousand meters away. So the range for the reflectivity or reflectorless range, R1000 or R500 means that it's able to shoot a shot um, 500 meters away or a thousand meters away without a prism. Um, so if you're looking at an R500 total station, you set it up, again, you can pick up a shot at 500 meters away without a, a prism. General rule of thumb that you can, uh, general rule of thumb is that you can pick up a prism at 1.5 times that distance. So if you had an R500 total station, you realistically would be able to pick up a prism at about a thousand meters away, which is one kilometer. Um, the TSO3 has a, uh, has a grayscale keyboard, um, no option for a second keyboard, but the TSO7 does, um, has the option for a second keyboard. The TSO7 has a full color touch screen. Um, there's no Bluetooth uh, available for the TSO3. It's just a very basic uh, total station. You set it up, pick up your points, do your angle measurements, and that's it. The Bluetooth is really introduced in the, in the 07 and up. Um, uh, for the auto height module, that's a new module that Leica uh, actually recently came out with for most of their instruments. One very, very cool feature. So what it does is um, in the past, when you set up your total station on a tripod, you'd have to basically put your uh, measuring tape down to the ground and measure to a crosshair that was uh, exactly at the center of your scope. Um, nowadays, we're able to offer a total station that when you set up your, uh, your instrument on the tripod, you simply hit the button and it works just like a disco. It'll shoot a distance to the ground, um, pick up your height, and your total station will have its, uh, its height set up. So this comes uh, into play. It does not work for the TSO3, but it comes into play in the 07 as well as the TS10. Um, we'll talk about the robotic total stations that have it uh, in the, later in my slides. And you got your, uh, your working temperatures here. Um, the TSO7 and TS10 right out of the box, you can purchase an Arctic version. Um, no fret though, if you do purchase a total station um, without the Arctic version, you can simply send that out to Leica and we'll get it converted to you over to a, an Arctic version. It's just a, a more, insulated, uh, more insulated total station with different grease in it. So it doesn't, uh, it's not like molasses when it gets into a cold temperature. Next subject, so why would someone go ahead and purchase a robotic total station? Well, for one, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest key factors is that it's a one person operation. So it's basically a two to one labor ratio. So one person is doing the job of two people. By doing so, you're actually increasing your project productivity because you're not waiting for someone to uh, turn, your, turn the total station to uh, stitch you in. Um, you're not uh, yelling back and forth to, uh, you know, to, to record data. You're simply by yourself. The total station is following you wherever you go. And because of these two key components, it's actually a lower cost of ownership over time. Yes, the initial cost is higher than a manual total station, but you're not paying for an extra person. The total station is following you completely by itself. Um, so it's kind of like a two-time bonus uh, to get a, the higher product productivity. So a robotic total station is uh, essentially used to turn automatically to search, uh, aim, measure, and follow different or follow prisms. Um, it uses ATR, which is automatic target recognition, as well as ATR plus, which is just um, uh, an updated version of the regular ATR, um, to recognize and lock onto targets uh, instead of foreign objects. When I say foreign objects, we've actually ran into quite a couple situations with different uh, total stations that um, the laser actually lock onto a reflective vest, uh, the headlight of a car, um, even windows, because windows can be reflective. 
Um, when this happens and you're far out in the field, you actually cannot see your total station where it's pointing unless you have an onboard camera and you turn it on um, and then you can see on your data collector, the, uh, which is right here, you can see on your data collector um, yourself or you can see where it's actually pointing to. Um, ATR is an automatic, so the automatic target recognition will actually read the reflectivity of that certain material. So if it's a, if it's a safety vest, it'll notice that the uh, bounce back of light is not as much as you would get out of a prism. Therefore, it will just unlock itself from the, uh, from the safety vest and just continue on with, with, uh, with your prism. Sometimes it'll just recognize it automatically and just continue with your prism. Um, robotic total stations, they have a filter learning capability. So what this does is that it'll actually ignore all your unwanted targets and follow only your target uh, you walking in the field. So you can either have a 360 prism, which is shown here. You can have a circular prism, mini prism, doesn't matter. Um, so what filter learning does is one great example is if you're working on a construction site and uh, you have all these different prisms uh, standing around and you're just walking around with a 360 prism, you can shoot at these uh, different prisms and your total station will actually learn that these prisms and prism types are uh, at these different areas. Um, and when you're walking by these prisms, it will, not, it will not lock into it at all. It'll just continue with your prism. It does not matter if you put this directly in front of the, uh, the prism that's, uh, that's just sitting there. Um, it will just continue on with, uh, with your prism. So that's a great uh, learning capability of a total station because it can, it can really screw up your data when it gets to, uh, when you get back to the office. Um, and again, one great, uh, one great plus about a robotic total station is that there's little to no, co no communication problems. Uh, as you're by yourself, you're in control of your own data and uh, your own data quality. So let's look at the difference, um, the different models that we have here through Lighthouse. So we have uh, essentially, I'm going to say three models for the um, for like the total station, and then one monitoring monitoring total station. So if we just start with the difference, um, the three different models. So I'm going to be looking at the TS13, the TS16, as well as the TS60. They're all running Captivate. Um, again, you can get the different angular accuracies that you'd like. Um, this is probably the Cadillac um, of the regular total stations, sorry, of the robotic total stations. Um, your range, again, you can do R500 or R1000. Um, they all pretty much come with a touchscreen keyboard. Um, the TS13, you can actually get the model with no screen at all, and you'll just be connected to, excuse me, you'll just be connected to a, um, a CS20 data collector which we'll speak about uh, later in this, uh, in this presentation. Um, by doing so, it basically cuts the cost, the acquisition cost of a TS-13, um, as well as if you don't need a screen, um, or if you don't need someone to be looking at the screen right at its setup point, um, because you're gonna be, you're away from the instrument with your, uh, with your data collector and your prism. Um, it's a great tool to have. Again, uh, it, it's just a lower cost of acquisition. Um, they all come with Bluetooth, uh, just your regular battery life. Um, they all have ATR recognition. They all have prison search. Um, sorry, other than the TM50. Uh, they all have prism lock, other than the TM50. Um, they do not have an overhead camera, other than the TS16 and the uh, TM50. Sorry, and the TS60 as well. Um, the TS-16, they have different uh, grade models. So you have the TS-16, uh, TS-16P, as well as the TS-16I. Um, so that when you purchase the TS-16I, it's the imaging uh, version, which just comes with the regular overhead camera. And for the working temperatures, like I said, um, they're all regular out of the box. If you prefer uh, to have an Arctic version, which uh, maximizes your range, um, we can get that set up for you. So to talk about the Leica TM50, um, this was mentioned in Ben, Rant ben Rantela's uh, uh, presentation for uh, GeoMOS ground monitoring. So this is the instrument that would be essentially used for that. So this, uh, the TM50 is just the monitoring total station that you set up on a permanent point. 
and it sits there and runs 24 hours, seven days a week at a time. It never takes a break. Um, it's a very simple, uh, very simple total station. Um, it's an R1000. It's used a lot to measure uh, open pits um, for uh, ground stability issues. Um, <clears throat> And it's pretty much it. Yeah, you get all the same. Uh, you get all the same specs as uh, all the other robotic total stations. The third subject, or sorry, the third, um, the third uh, grade that you can get out of uh, uh, like a total station is called a multi-station. So it's a little bit different wording um, for for uh, for specific group, a specific reason. So a multi-station is actually used to monitor uh, measurements and analyze ground and structure, uh, ground and structures. Um, it's a total environment capture for some millimeter accuracy, as well as very handy for point cloud capture and imaging overlay for digital uh, capture of field to office. The biggest thing that a multi-station will give you is that it's an R2000 instrument, so it's able to shoot reflectorless at 2,000 meters away. Also, it's got a built-in scanner. Like I said, um, a multi-station has all the best features of a regular robotic total station with the added feature of, uh, of auto height. Um, so the new MS-60 that they just recently came out with, I believe back in uh, November, um, they just updated the regular MS-60 to, um, uh, to include a, a, the auto height feature module as well as update the scanning feature on it. Um, to, we're gonna we're not gonna dive too much in the MS60 today, but we do have a presentation coming up, I believe, next week. Um, it's presented at the end of my slides here that we will be diving into the uh, the new TS60 as well as the MS60. Um, so the MS60 is a two-in-one system. It's a 3D laser scanner as well as a total station. Um, all of our total station have a GNSS connectivity for uh, geo geolocated data. So this is either through, either through a smart station or your smart smart pool setup. Um, it's got a it's got uh, the analysis for complex structures and objects through the scanning capabilities, as well as able to do uh, digital imaging. So it's got a thirty time mag uh, telescope camera on uh, overhead camera, so you can actually really zoom in onto your data that you're trying to pick up uh, to, to really see if you're getting that corner of the building while you're in downtown Toronto. It's, uh, it's a really neat uh, feature to have. So if we just quickly look at the specs for the MS60, um, it's got the onboard software of Captivate, which is the, uh, we'll speak later down here in the slides. Um, it's got the one simple accuracy of one degree. Um, it's got a reflectorless range of R2000, so you're able to shoot about 2,000 meters away without uh, without the need of a reflector. Um, it's got a big five-inch display, um, color and touch. Um, you can get uh, the screens on both sides. Um, like I, uh, like all the other total stations, or most of the other total stations, it's got the Bluetooth, the wireless, it's got the ATR, um, it's got the prison search. It's got pretty much everything that uh, you'd require on a total station. So when I speak about Cadillacs or the best of the best for total stations, this is really the one, uh, the one of because, like I said, it's got your two in one for the scanner. It's got uh, the total station capabilities as well as all the other neat uh, features that we're able to offer. So when you get a total station, you're going to want something out in the field because uh, if your if your total station is following you, you're going to want to see how that data is getting picked up or a method to pick up your data uh, manually. This is the way to connect to a, like a total station out in the field. So you essentially got two ways. You got your simple data collector as well as, as your tablet. Um, so you got your Leica CS20 right here. So it's got a nice big five inch display. Um, it runs on Windows EC7. Um, both of our data collectors do have uh, onboard Captivate. We've got a full QWERTY keyboard, not the ABCD, which is a very um, useful feature for, for surveys on the field because they're used to keyboards. So they're not going to want to start looking for where's D, where's C. Um, so it, it's been a request in the past, and uh, a lot of people do like that. It's got two gig of internal storage, IP68, and it, it's in the same range as the ARCTIC uh, feature, so that's why we don't make an ARCTIC feature of CS20. 
For the tablet, we have some nice big tablets, a 10.1 touch display. Uh, this thing is actually just like computer, it, like everybody knows a tablet. Windows 8.1 Pro, um, it's running Captivate in the background. Um, it's got a, just like a computer, a nice pop-up keypad. We've got a built-in 128 gigabyte uh, SSD drive, IP65. The working range or the working temperature range is a little bit limited. So that's something if you're interested that we'd have to look at, but we do make cases that we're able to insulate to make sure that uh, everything is, uh, nothing really happens to the field. You guys have been hearing me a lot um, saying onboard software um, that it's running like a Captivate. So I'm going to just do a couple of slides and just show you really what like a Captivate is. Uh, so like a Captivate, it's, uh, it's very dominant in performance through a seam, uh, seamless integration. So it's a very user friendly, um, very user friendly maneuverability with easy on the eye designs, kind of like your iPhone. Um, and as you're scrolling through, I'll show you in the slides, it's got nice, helpful live tips and tricks. So when you do get on a screen, it'll kind of guide you towards uh, where to go and how to, how to survey. And with, uh, with um, the built-in applications on Captivate, um, you're infinitely able to uh, bridge the field and the office for work. Um, you're able to send data as well as receive data over the internet, which is a very neat feature. We'll be, we'll be talking about it through my slides. So looking at the home screen, when you turn on your data collector, uh, so either your CS20 or your CS35, this is the screen that will be popping up. So like I said, it's a nice, easy on the eyes uh, screen. You got your uh, your job tiles here. You can create your new jobs as well as back here to create a new design. So back here, this is where you put in your, your CAD designs, your, um, your DXF designs, any designs, road designs will be going in there uh, to work with. Um, you got your application tiles down here. So this is a very short list here, but we got about 30 different apps that we can include. Um, so it's, you can easily hide all the apps that you're not gonna be using that you don't have a license for. Um, and you can rearrange to show the apps that you use the most. So I can just, uh, if you're in the field, you just tap and hold the stake points and you can move it to wherever you'd like. Um, the Captivate has a nice 3D viewer that's full, that's full AutoCAD um, compatible. So you can drop a DXF, an ASCII file, um, pretty much any AutoCAD file into this 3D viewer. And you can simply pick a point or a line or uh, any segment in this uh, 3D viewer and simply stake to it. Very, very uh, handy to have because if you don't know the name of your point but you know its location, you simply go to the 3D viewer and you can stake right from there. It's very cool to have. Um, it's got a full rotation for plan and side view, so you can rotate it much like you can in AutoCAD. You can view it in 3D. And when we spoke about connectivity from field to office, we're looking at this little app symbol up here. So this is your connectivity tab. It's got your Bluetooth tab, um, your Leica Exchange tab. So your Leica Exchange tab, or sorry, your Leica Exchange um, is basically um, your communication between your field to office. So if there was a change that's needed um, in the field that your engineers just picked up, they can simply send it to you uh, right through like exchange and you'll have it on your data collector within minutes. It's got a full BIM 360 uh, docs as well as Active Assist. So what Active Assist is, is if you're having troubles in the field, something's not working out right for you, as a like a dealer or even like it directly, um, we're able to tap into your data collector to see what the issue is what the issue is and basically help you out right there. It's it, essentially just a screen share so we can help you out right in the field. So like it captivates. So I just opened up this uh, one of the uh, one of the tabs. Um, sorry, one of the uh, the applications. Um, right. the mental application. yeah. Yep. Going back on your previous slide, so then like especially during these times and people are remote or they're trying to to, to do any kind of troubleshooting, it, it's a really good time to really be able to utilize that um, connection and that feature so we can remote on. Um, have, we, have we seen, uh, are we able to, or, or sorry, is it easy for sites to get that option? Yes, it is. So Active Assist is uh, generally free when you purchase uh, the, when you purchase a Captivate uh, instrument. 
Um, the only thing that's required by you is to have a SIM card for internet connectivity. So it basically goes through, uh, much like your cell phone, it'll go through the data network uh, so that we be able to see. So yes, you are a writer now. Um, in these times, it's a very fantastic tool to have. This actually minimizes the whole uh, 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 social, it helps out for the social distancing um, while keeping your, your work going. Because we're not, we don't, uh, we won't, we don't go to site directly to help you out. For the nice, simple tips and tricks, we're able to help you out with your computer. Yeah. Um, also, another thing we could do is, you know, do remote support through Teams or rather through Zoom, like we are doing right now, and just share screens, and then help out anybody on site as well. I think Ben's been doing a very good job with that for any tech support. Yeah, for sure. So one of our, uh, so we have two lead tech support uh, agents in our company. So we got Ben Rantula, um, and we got uh, Francis Navo. So these two people, were, they're able to tap into, again, your active assist to help you out uh, directly in the field. Um, and if you're, uh, if you're not in the field, if you're in your office, we're able to tap into the Zoom meeting, go to webinars, um, Teams, we got, we got all the options. And if we don't have your option, um, you can almost count that we'll get your option to help you out, for sure. And then online training support, we can, uh, we can utilize that as well. You got it, yeah. All right, thanks. Okay, I'll, I'll let you go again. Sorry, Seth. Yeah, no worries. Um, all right, so like I said earlier, so I just opened up one of the applications just to show you what uh, like this active business looks like in, uh, in the general view. So when you go to any tab uh, or any application, this is, will be your general view. So the only thing that will be different is the sidebar here. Um, you always have your true viewer, which you can hide, um, but you'll always have um, sorry, again, you always have your 3D viewer. This is the only part that will be changing. So like I said, I'll, I'm just showing you the measure application just to show you what it generally looks like. So here you got all your point and code info. You can do all your, your point information, your staking information, your road information, your line information, any information that you have will all be uh, shown here. Um, so this is your, uh, your, your point information. If you tap on this, this is your code information. You got, again, you're a nice uh, big 3D viewer. Um, you can view all your data in 2D or 3D plane. Um, as well, select a point to stake, view, or view the info of your point and all that stuff. Um, if you have a camera on your MS60 or your TS16, if you hit this button, your, your camera would automatically open up and see where your code station is pointing. You got your view right here. So from there, you can click and it'll show you a, a couple options that you can rotate in 3D. Um, you can look at plan view, zoom in, anything like that. This button here is your zoom, zoom in, zoom out, and you got your settings. Um, down here, uh, <clears throat> when I first started with Total Stations, I actually, I, I asked a question, why is there a measure distance store? So I put a nice little equation here, measure is equal to distance and store. So by me saying that is if you hit distance, it'll, it'll, uh, measure a shot, but it will not record it as a point. If sent to record it as a point, once you measured it, you hit store. If you hit the measure button, it'll actually do these two buttons at the same time. So it'll measure it and then store it automatically for you. So just to give a little brief of what measure distance store is. Um, I, I, I included this, uh, this, this uh, panel here because I wanted to show you guys how uh, how earlier when I said that like the Captivate gives you nice and helpful tips and tricks. Um, this is what I was talking about. So when you open an app, like stick to lines, stick to road, uh, anything like that, stick to rails, um, this is pretty much, this will be your starting screen for the application. So uh, right at the top here, you're going to have a nice uh, drop down um, with many different options uh, for different types or different methods uh, to use for the job that you're trying to do. So when you drop down and you select one, appropriate to the method that you pick will have nice helpful tips and tricks um, and descriptions on the, cho on the chosen option. If, uh, if the reading's not uh, going well for you, you have a nice big visual here to show you exactly what, um, what, this, uh, <clears throat> what the method is for. So like I said, like to Captivate, we're really trying to be user friendly. We're trying to show you um, we're trying to make it very, uh, very helpful while you're in the field. 
Um, and if you have any questions, like I said, I'm here to help you guys out and we have a whole, whole team to tech support. So for like a Captivate, we have, like I said, many different application options. So we have your regulars, you have your 3D viewer, which is automatic when it comes to when you purchase out an uh, electrical location. Um, you got your measure speak line, um, you got your traverse, you have many, many different options when it comes to uh, when it comes to um, methods of surveying. One cool one that I actually I would just like to mention that I played with yesterday is called the athletics. So this is just mainly used for track and field, but it's uh, used for high jumping, um, pole vaulting and stuff like that. You can actually use it. Um, let's use pole vaulting, for example. Um, measure the start line and, and calculate the height and the speed that the uh, that the jumper was uh, was doing. It's a very very cool app. It's not it's not printer pre uh, frequently used, but it's uh, it's just something interesting that uh, that popped up. Um, but yeah, like I said, these are a bunch of different applications that we're able to offer. So. Uh, in essence, what can a Leica tool location do for you? So, like I said, um, depending on your solution, it's a one person operation, so you can reduce costs over time. Um, you capture data at a quicker pace, you boost productivity based on your solution. Leica total stations are known for their highly accurate data pickup. Um, up for the MS60, you can complete an, an analysis of grounding structures. As well with any total station or uh, or data structures that we have, it's a field to office communication for real time data transfer. And I believe that's it for my for my presentation. Um, just before we move on to questions, I just want to uh, mention that we do have a webinar next week: the new PS60 and MS60 with Frank Limbo, and as well as our hexagon mining presentation with Victor Valdez for building future minds, uh, building smart minds of the future. All of our webinars are on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. So if you'd like, uh, like to be part of it, sign up. Now the board's open to questions. Thanks, Steph. Well done. Uh, I think you got lots of uh... Lots of information across, and I think uh, if anybody's on the call, that's definitely looking at uh, the Leica solution. Uh, by all means, reach out to to Steph. Uh, he's he goes through all the Leica training, all the protocols in order to become a Leica distributor. Um, so we spend a lot of time directly with Leica at their workshops, training. So we know uh, all of the all of the applications in, in very high depth. Uh, we also have a great technical team that's able to offer support. Uh, I, I won't say 24 seven because um, they'll hurt me, but they're really, they're really, really keen on getting back to you as soon as possible. So if you have any questions in regards to the technical support team, feel free to reach out to Ben Arantula or Frank Nepo um, on, on that side as well. Yeah, well said Bruno. Um, yeah, so like, like you said, we got a full team to help you guys out. Um, I'm part of the sales team, but uh, I always do uh, small tech support as much as I know um, on that side. Um, I don't know the answer, I'll always be reaching out for the answer and I'll definitely find it for you guys. Perfect. So everyone that attended the webinar, um, I believe we have your contact information. So we'll just reach out and just say thank you. Um, well, Steph will uh, for, for participating and then uh, should you not have a question here, feel free to ask away. So is there, uh, just, is there any questions for anybody? Feel free to shoot me out. Uh, you can ask now or you can shoot me an email later. Hey, Steph. Hey, Pat. Yes, um, Windows 8.1, why not Windows 10? So the new tablets that, uh, sorry, the tablets that Like to Captivate is coming out with, um, the CS35, they're Windows 8.1. It's just uh, that simple. Um, I don't have an answer for you on why it's not Windows 10 right now, um, but I assume it'd be in the future uh, for uh, for an update for sure. It's, it's just our, we're mandated by our T department to have Windows 10 um, 
currently we're using Windows 7. Mm -hmm. Actually, and XP on some tablets, and that is a big no-no. So, uh, we—that's kind of curious. I'll—I'll I'll shoot you an email later. Some more questions about that for sure. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, thanks for the question there, Pat. Um, it's a great question. Um, we are close with the development team with uh, Leica, so I can definitely shoot that question over to them. Ask them why it's not 10.1. It might be security issue. I'm really not sure, but uh, I'll let you—I'll give you an answer on that. Okay, thanks. No problem. Any more questions while, uh, while we're here? I think that's it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for attending my webinar. Um, it was great to speak with you guys. I just hope everybody's staying safe and healthy during this uh, pandemic. Uh, try and stay inside as much as you can. Wash your hands, all that wonderful stuff. But uh, yeah, guys, stay safe and healthy and you got if you have my contact info if there's any questions you guys have shoot me a line and i'll definitely uh i'll help you guys out right on thanks Jeff. all right thank you guys have a good day